I'm here with my boy Turkish and we both witnessed a hugely disappointing defeat for Arsenal, back-to-back -back defeats. First it was Brighton at home, today it was Forest away. You know what, I'm, bro, I'm struggling to comprehend that. I'm also struggling to work out which was the worst performance, last week or today. I can't even help you with that conundrum, I'll be honest. They've, they've both got um, reasons why they'd be worse than the other. The fact that the matter is, we have bottled it. We have bottled it. Come international break in March, we was, what, eight points clear? Now what, we've lost the title, we've still two games to play for Man City? Come on, come on. Nine games after the international break, three wins, three draws, three losses. I can't lie to you, it's become a season to forget for me. I, I know there was much jubilation about our points tally after 19 games and us getting to the back end of the season and what some might say challenged Manchester City for it. But in the end, City have kind of w walked across the line. We've mm -hmm. given it to them. They didn't even have to kick a ball mm -hmm. to win the Premier League title. It may sound like a silly question, and forgive me if I'm sounding a bit disingenuous, but where did it go wrong? <sighs> where did it go wrong? <laughs> it's, 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 it's hard to pinpoint where it went wrong or what went wrong. All I know is it's gone wrong. Um, you, can, you can look at it and say it's a young team, but I'm not here to find excuses, Laurie, yeah, yeah. you know? It is a young team. But at the end of the day, I didn't wait 19 years to have an excuse of a young team. Mm. Like, they haven't got the experience for this. They haven't got the mentality for this. They haven't got the bottle for this. Mm, so, I, I, essentially, that's where it's gone wrong. And it's not just the young players. I mean, the experienced players are, are, are not doing their job either. All in all... They should be ashamed of themselves the past couple of games. They should be ashamed of themselves post-international break in March. Strong words, but you know what? I'm finding it difficult to disagree with you. I'm trying to put a positive spin on things, but there's absolutely nothing positive I can say about that today. I mean, listen, we all knew going in that Forest, they needed this badly, more than us, I would say. So that does make a difference. So... But that's not a get out clause for what took place today. What did you think of the um, team selection and the tactics? I would have thought that we would have seen maybe a Reese Nelson in there, but we hear that he's ill. I would have thought maybe we see an Emil Smith Rowe, um, maybe a Vieira, even though the last couple of times we've seen Vieira start a game, it hasn't gone uh, as good as we would have wanted it. I just thought we would have seen a bit more of a freshness to the start in 11. Mm -hmm. We didn't. We see Tierney on the bench. Does that indicate his time is now up? Because, you know, it's one thing Zinchenko starting ahead of Tierney. It's another thing Tommy Asu getting games in that position ahead of Tierney. Today, we saw Xhaka get selected in that position ahead of Tierney. And for all the people at the start of the game saying, oh, it's because we lacked control against Brighton. It's all on Tierney. Did we fucking control the game against Forrest? Mm. <laughs> did, what did we do? People might argue, we had possession though. What did we do with it? Mm. I don't give a shit about having 70, 80, 90% possession. If you're not doing anything with it, it's about the game is about creating chances and stopping goals going in the other end. We failed to do that on both counts. With the goal that they scored... Um Gabriel goes in for a tackle there. He makes, he makes, he actually wins the ball, but it goes in off the striker a win. We, oh, I hope I haven't butchered that name. But is there a, a slight misfortune about the goal or what? Gabriel should be taking him out as well. He should have won that tackle. It shouldn't be as soft as it was. I think it was a safe slide tackle more than it was a, a rugged centre back slide tackle. People might argue it would have been a no, it wouldn't have been a penalty because the ball was there to be won. He did win the ball. He just done it in a manner that still allowed our knee to, you know, get get something on it and put it in the back of the net. It's not good enough. But let's even just go back a couple what twenty seconds before that. Oh, the guard again. Yeah, yeah. You know, and don't get it twisted. He did that against City, didn't he? Exactly. And don't get it twisted when Odegaard scores goals when he's you know creating. We all give him the plaudits, but that pass was in, inexcusable. How can you just pass it to a man, mm. leaving us, what was it, three on two or two on one or whatever it was. It was, a, it was another moment from Odegaard in, in the running that cost us a goal. And in the end, it's, it's cost us three points. It's not all on Odegaard. It's not all on Gabriel. Because what was our attack doing? Again, another poor showing. Without Martinelli, we lack a cutting edge. Mm. I was going to ask you about that because myself and you, we were talking before the game even about the lack of penetration up top. Jesus has bought us a lot of things 
But it has to be said, especially in the last few games, he's not given us that cutting edge we're looking for. And of course, we've got Eddie on the bench. He came on. I've been asking for him to... Get, I was asking for him to start today. But to be honest with you, when he did come on, I hardly saw him touch a ball. We're all at this moment in time arguing about should we keep Eddie? Should we keep Balogun? What should we do? What we should do is get a better goal scorer than Jesus. And again, this is not me criticising because you're going to get bare sensitive fans that saying, oh, so disrespectful. Look what Jesus has done for us. I rate Jesus. I rate him. But as an out and out goal scorer, he lacks. So let's bring in a proper goal scorer so we have the options. Whether it be for this game, it's Jesus. Whether it be for this game, it's the gunman. Right now, we're arguing about Eddie and Balogun. Who gives a shit? Mm. Where we are right now, it's not about thinking about what youngster can come in next and help us elevate. You know, we've got enough youngsters. We've got enough of that. Mm. We need experience, we need quality, and especially in the striking position, we need a guy that doesn't think twice in front of goal, mm. puts his foot through it. No, I agree with you on all of those points. And what I would say is, it's funny, because uh, I was scratching my head when that game finished. Obviously, I was very disappointed in the performance. But I was trying to think of some kind of positive. And I think you may inadvertently just hit on it there. With these last two games, the two poor performances, two poor defeats, at the very least now, the manager will know what he needs to do. Um, but it's whether we can bring in the players that you speak of. Who would you like to see come in? You know what? I've said it before and I'll say it again. Arteta's done enough in the transfer window for me to trust him in his decision making. I didn't think Ben White was going to become what we've seen of him this season. I didn't think Ramsdale was going to help elevate us like he has done. So he's got credit in the bank in that, in that, in that aspect. But we still need five. Cecil asked me last week, how many people do we need? Five men. We need five players to come in. You say maybe this highlights the, the, you know, who we need and what we need. I think it was, it was already evident a few games ago. Mm. I think it was evident a couple of seasons ago that Holding is not good enough to, to, to come in and do a job. Eddie Nketiah is not a good enough backup striker. I don't care about the connection some of these fans have with these players. Mm. I don't care about all that. Sounds like you're having a pop at me. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not even no. you. Uh, no, I know, I know. I know. Me, and, me and you yeah, debate yeah. these things all the time. Yeah. We argue about Eddie and whatnot. Cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but sometimes I look at our fans online and some of their opinions. It's always wrapping things in cotton wool. It's always uh, looking on the bright side of things. Come on. Yeah. No, the reason why I was advocating for Eddie, and I think I should just explain myself, is that previously the manager had said, hadn't he, when, we was, when there was talk about bringing a new striker in previously and we gave Eddie the new contract, the manager was quite forthright in saying, listen, man, I trust Eddie. I'm confident he can get us the goals. He got off to a reasonable start once Jesus has got injured, but I think even that's tailed away. And noticeably for me, the manager's not seemed to trust in him because when he's brought him on in games, it's been like five, 10 minutes. He's not really going to do nothing in that time. So yeah, you're right. We do need to bring in... I'm, a slew of players, man. I, I'm a billionaire. Did you know that? Yeah. I'm a billionaire. How come? You see, what comes out of your mouth can be one thing. What you see with your eyes is another. He said what he said about Eddie. When push come to shove, Eddie got replaced by Trossard in February. He said what he said about Nelson. And Nelson's been offered a third contract now. When we're seeing Saka finish dead on his legs, mm. we don't see Nelson come in. Mm. We haven't seen Nelson enough. So say what you want. I'm looking at what you're doing because this club says a lot. Let's not forget about be excited and all this stuff. And yes, take a step back. It's the first time we've gone this far in a title challenge for years, maybe 19 years. But the fact of the matter is there's still a, 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 quite a bit of work to be done. I won't mm. say a lot, quite a bit of work to be done. Mm. I've just mentioned holding an Eddie. Was today down to holding an Eddie? No. But what I'm saying is when we look on the bench, we should have better options, mm -hmm. especially to compete with Manchester City. So no, today is not on them. No, the season is not on them. But this summer, it's on Arteta Edu and the Cronkies to not allow these reasons or these excuses to be the same come next year. Because I've heard, we've heard these kind of things before. Yeah. We've, we, year on year, we've done the same thing. I'd argue year on year on year we've done the same thing because if I take myself back to two seasons ago and we talk about that Villarreal semi-final in the Europa League, we bottled that. Mm -hmm. If we talk about top four last year, we bottled that. Mm -hmm. If we talk about the Premier League title this year, we bottled it because it's not like we lost to City and lost to Liverpool at Anfield and that's why we're not winning the title. It's because we draw to Southampton mm -hmm. at the Emirates, get smoked by Brighton at the Emirates, draw to West Ham having gone 2-0 up, mm -hmm. just lost to Nottingham Forest. 
Yeah. Confirm their safety. Confirm their safety and confirm City as champions. Now, listen, going to uh, wind this up. One game left um, against Wolves next week. How would you describe the season overall? Obviously, you're disappointed about what's happened today and last week. Um, I just want your quick appraisal of the season. There is one game left and obviously you'll be asked that next week. But if you had to round it up, what would you say? If I had to round it up, I'd say it looked like it could have been a great season. But in the end, it's a season to forget. Wow. Because a Premier League season is 38 games, Laurie. I don't care about 19. I don't care about 30 games. I care about 38 games. And we've fallen short. A season is not just the Premier League. League Cup, which I don't care about, but a lot of fans do. What did we do in that competition? Nothing. FA Cup, okay, we had a tough fixture against City away from home. But it's not the first time we've gone out early in the FA Cup in the last few years. Europa League, Sporting, come on. These are all parts of a season. So it's, it's, it's easy to say, ah, oh, we've got bigger fish to fry or ah, oh, we've got bigger things to focus on and, and use that as, you know, as, a, as another example of wrapping ourselves or the situation in cotton wool. We've fallen over the line. We've, we've, well, we haven't even fallen over the line. We've fallen at the last hurdle mm. in the Premier League. So I'm going to look back at these things and say, hold on. It looked like it could have been a great season, but ultimately come, come, next month when I remember this season it's going to leave a sour taste in my mouth because of the way it's ended come next year if we kick on and we challenge again and we go far into the Champions League and we win a trophy okay I said it last week we'll look back at this season and say this was the catalyst this was the springboard for the success we are finding ourselves in at the moment if we don't it's going to be the season where we're like we fucked it we're not even going to finish higher on points than the Tottenham team of 2016-17 when they finished second to Chelsea. Do you, do you hear Tottenham fans talking about that season? And that's Tottenham. Yeah, yeah. We have so much, so much more history than that club. But even their fans don't talk about 16-17 where they pushed Chelsea to the end yeah. or they got 86 points, they nearly got at 90. We haven't even hit that level. 50 points after 19 games to be on 81 after 37. We fucked it. Okay, you've heard Turkish. Um, he's very disappointed. He seems upset, angry. I'm feeling your pain, bro. Um, thank you very much. Love and um, hopefully next week, there'll be better things to talk about. There won't. Shop for AFTV merch at shop.aftv.co.uk. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, and Twitch. We've got content for every platform, so check it out.